All right, let's talk about actually sizing our rows and our columns or sizing our tracks in CSS Grid. And we're going to how that relates to the box model. So open up 07 sizing tracks and the starter file that we have here. Whoa, I've got 15 different ones in here. Now let's go ahead and make a bunch of columns. So we'll say grid, template, columns. And so far we have just been using pixels because this is sort of the easiest to understand. 200 pixels, 200 pixels. Give it a save. You see that we have that. Now, uh, what happens if we use percentages? Because I know that a lot of you will think like, oh, I would like to be 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, right? You all adds up to 100%. Well, now we start to get that horizontal scroll. And, and why is that? Well, that's because we are really doing 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 20 px. 20 px, 20 px in between. So we're really 60 pixels over, and that's what's causing that horizontal scroll. So it's not that great idea to use percentages to add up to 100%. Don't get me wrong, you can always use percentages to uh, maybe take up half of something or 80% of something or a quarter of something. But if you're trying to do the whole song and dance where you're trying to add up your values and then uh, subtract your grid gap from it, it's just going to be a big headache. So rather than using percentages in most cases, we're actually going to be using what's called the FR unit, and that's referred to as the fractional unit. So let's explain how this actually works. Let's start off with just two columns, 200 pixels, 200 pixels, and give that a save. You'll notice that, here, let's put a, let's put a big old border on our grid. So border, 10px, solid. Let's var it up, bar yellow. So this is our grid here, which is the yellow, but we're not using all of it. That's because we've defined them in pixels. So what would be great is if we could just evenly distribute each of the columns. And that's where the FR unit comes in, the fractional unit. What it does is uh, fractional units represent the amount of space left after all the elements are uh, laid out. So what happens is CSS Grid will will first go and lay out all of the columns that it needs to that have an explicit width or an explicit height in in terms of rows. So what it will do is it'll say 200 px and then 200 px. And if I wanted to add a third column called 1fr, what that's going to do is it's going to say, well, this much is extra here, so I'm going to take up that much. So if I give that a save now, you'll see that that third column is now going to take up however much room is left. If I were to increase this to 400, there's going to be quite a bit less left and one FR is going to stand for that. Interesting. Okay, good. Now let's bring it back to just 200 PX. Now I just have one column and lots of extra space. If I were to say one FR, one FR, each of these two new columns are going to take up one amount of the, they're sort of going to split it between them and they're each going to be the same size. Now, if you've used a flex grow or a flex shrink value, this works very similar to that in that you can start to double up these values. So these aren't like pixels or percentages or anything. They're just in proportion to how much free space is left. So if this one is 2FR, this one is going to take up twice as much of the free space as this one. So it does stand for fractional units, but I kind of like the, the idea of it, it, it standing for free space, FR. So now we see that the 2FR is taking up twice the amount of free space as that one. Now that's great because what I will often do is instead of using pixels at all, if I just want to split it up really evenly, I'll just do 1FR and I'll just do that. Whoa, I'll do that a couple times over and over. One, two, three, four. And that will give me four equal columns. And again, the way that the browser is going to uh, be laying this out is that first it will uh, take away any any hard needs that it has. And in our case, it needs to take away 60 pixels because it has 20, 20 and 20 in the grid gap. And then you've got a whole bunch of space left and it will just evenly distribute the values between all of them. So let's look at how that would look if we have grid template rows. In our case, if I give that a save, nothing changed. And, and why is that? Well, um, by default, the height 
of a grid, and this is very similar to display block elements. The default uh, height of an element is just however high the contents are, but the default width of the element is as wide as the actual viewport that we have. I have some margin on the body here, so things don't uh, butt up right against the browser. So what could we do there? Well, you could you could put an explicit height on the container. So we could just say height, I don't know, something like 600 px. And now you'll see that uh, because we now have a hard height to our grid, each of them are going to take up the amount. And if I were to take the second one and maybe make it 10 FR, you'll notice that the second row is taking up 10 times the amount of the free space as the rest of them. So FR units are extremely helpful before you reach for percentages. And again, uh, let me let me show you, you could do 50% here. And what that will do is it'll first take 50% and then we have some free units. But do not try to add up to 100%. Uh, rather try to reach for your FR units in there. Similarly, we can also use pixels and rems and ems and any other unit that you're used to. Um, but I find myself uh, primarily using uh, rems and FR units uh, in most cases. The next thing I want to talk to you about is the auto keyword. So let's get rid of the rows here and let's get rid of all of our columns. And what's the difference if I have auto in one FR? Well, give it a save. You can see that auto will just adjust to uh, the max size of the content. So right now you can see that it's likely the 13 or the 15, whatever is the widest content that is defining the width of this column. So if I were to go into three and make it something like West Boss is cool, you'll see that the entire column becomes wider because that one element is auto sizing that column. What you might expect here is that the one and the five and the seven would just be much smaller and only this one would go wider. And um, what we really need to know here about CSS grid is that it's a grid. It's not going to, to just loosely place itself. A lot of times people think that you can sort of do a Pinterest based layout where everything's just fits into each other. And while that sort of is possible, we'll go into some examples um, in, in the future once we get into more real world stuff. What you need to know is that uh, the auto keyword will just automatically size it as far as we want. And we can mix and match that again. If I do auto one FR again, it'll sort of just go uh, back and forth, back and forth. Now, interesting. So you see that these ones are really small because the 13 is deciding the width, whereas this one is pretty wide because the West Boss is cool, is defining the width. So that's auto in the FR unit. Let's see it in the next one.